It was at that moment. He knew and he said, I am become death, the destroyer of cardboard. <laughs> All right, guys, all cheesy things aside today, we're gonna talk about a handful of knives that are really, really good at destroying cardboard in particular. And I feel like this is a worthwhile conversation to have or talk about because in traditional EDC spheres, you know, we might like to carry tactical knives that are aggressive or mean or potentially stabby. And, you know, at the core, I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that honestly, most of our tasks in the world of EDC revolve around things like opening packages or breaking down cardboard or other such fibrous materials. So I thought today it would be worthwhile talking about a handful of knives that I think are particularly good at the art of destroying cardboard. Now, this is not an all-encompassing list. There are probably other knives in my you know, list of blades that will do as good of a job as these. And of course, there are many other knives out in the wild world that will do as good a job as the knives that we're gonna go over today. But I thought it would be worthwhile and kind of fun to talk about some knives that I personally use quite frequently when it comes down to breaking down cardboard. And I feel like this is something, I um, mean, you know, like I have a certificate in cardboard breaking down, obviously really not quite, but the reality is I do break down a lot of cardboard from boxes and packaging. And so these are the handful of knives I tend to gravitate towards and grab when I want to do, or when I have to do such tasks, because I do, these tasks on a fairly frequent basis. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, so this is roughly the list of the knives or the six that I chose that honestly do a pretty darn good job. So let's go from my left, your right, to your left. So first off, we have the TRM Neutron. Now this guy is really, really, probably one of the best on the list in my opinion. And that is primarily because TRM makes a very thin, very incredibly slicey blade. Like as you guys can see here, the uh, stock on this guy is not that much. It is a very thin stocked CPM 20 CV. And mine in particular is sharpened to have a nice mirror polish on it. So it moves through things like um, cardboard a little bit better than other blades might, but Either way, between the thin stock of the blade and that very, very, very sharp edge, of course, mixed with the near full flat grind on this guy, makes it an absolute laser beam. And I have talked about that before in other videos, but this is in particular one of my favorites for destroying cardboard. This thing absolutely goes ballistic and will tear it up very well. Whether we're talking about thick or thin stock cardboard, this thing absolutely absolutely slices through it all. About the only thing I dislike about this knife when it comes to using it in that regard is the handle can be a little bit thin. And I think that's something that some people underestimate. I mean, I sit down and I break down cardboard boxes and stuff. I tend to just sit there and just go through a lot. And so when you're pushing a blade through thick cardboard, it's kind of like pushing a blade through thick wood. So it kind of you know, takes some force, it takes some effort, and it is not always the easiest thing to do. So having a thicker handle just makes it makes the edge or the, the blade as a whole less prone to rolling in your hand. So the TRM Neutron, that's about the only thing I dislike, but the blade itself is a very good performer. Another one that I think will surprise a lot of people, but is worth mentioning, is a lot of Emerson's lineup. And once again, it's because there is a reasonably thin blade stock to these guys, and they're ground pretty darn thin. This one in particular is my Emerson Commander. I use this one fairly frequently to break down cardboard as well and I like it because once again we're kind of fixing the last complaint of the neutron this has a very thick handle so maybe not super thick or like super overbuilt handle but it just feels a lot more substantial in hand so when you're holding it and you're cutting through whatever material you know you have that reasonably thin blade stock and pretty good pretty fine edge and but it pairs very well with that nice thick 
full grip. So you're feeling like you're holding on to something and physically the blade is less likely or less prone to rolling on you um, when you're trying to cut through thicker materials. So that's the basic thing I like about the Emerson. And I think a lot of the Emersons are surprisingly slicey. Like I think a lot of people think they're just meant to be heavy, hard use abusers. And there is that too, but they are pretty slicey as well. Now, of course, for high-end knives, um, I think the Chris Reeve Knives Sebenza is one of the best choices. And this is kind of surprising because I do love my Umnumzon. That's what's actually in my pocket right now. And I do love my Nkosi. But what I've found about the Umnumzon and Nkosi is they use a slightly thicker blade stock than the Sebenzas. The Sebenzas are just a little bit thinner and I think they pair better with the deeply hollow ground blade that is on all three of the knives. And so I think between that hollow grind and that thinner blade stock, you get something that absolutely just slices without a problem. And I will say too, something I like is the Tonto tip as well. Of course, this is not on all Sebenzas, but the Tonto tip, in my opinion, for breaking down cardboard really helps as well. Because if you're having to hold the cardboard in your hand and you can't just, you know, straight slice it from start to finish, that card or that Tonto tip just easily pierces into cardboard and just helps you initiate your first slice. So I think it's very nice. I really like it. This guy, I'm trying to actively clean up as you can see, just getting rid of all the tape uh, filth on it, but it is very good and a very venerable option in my opinion for um, slicing up some cardboard. All right, next one up is the TRM Shadow. Now, I like the TRM Shadow for pretty much every reason that I like the TRM Neutron. They have the same blade stock or blade thickness in their use of the CPM 20 CV, as you guys can hopefully see there. So the slicing performance is pretty much on par. The things that I like about the TRM Shadow more is a couple things. One, this is a wider, physically wider blade, so the grind grind is a little bit more narrow so you know you have a longer grind which results in a slightly finer edge than on the neutron and then the biggest thing that i really like about the um, shadow itself is that it has a notably thicker handle now this is still largely g10 so you don't feel the heft like this kind of feels like a heavier knife because the g10 and you know metal liner are about the same you know in thickness whereas on this guy you have very thin metal liner that actually is not you know full tang and you have a lot more g10 and so what that means is you get a much fuller feeling handle that is less likely or prone to roll in your hand and you also still get a pretty lightweight knife like this thing has a thicker handle but it, it is heavier than this but not substantially heavier than this uh, or the neutron so i really love the way the shadow is um, like set up i think that as far as it goes like for slicing cardboard or breaking down materials the shadow is probably one of the best options out there like bar none just because it's lightweight super thin super slicey uh, cpm 20 cv blade it also kind of has that you know almost reverse tonto tip so for you know starting and initiating a cut into cardboard or tape or anything like that you're going to have a lot of good piercing action with that tip and uh, once again it is also handy to have the axis style crossbar lock on this one we're actually gonna be doing a breakdown of this knife taking it apart and stuff and really looking at this guy on the inside but yeah this guy's pretty cool overall all right, next one up is going to be the American Blade Works or ABW Model 1. I prefer the Warncliffe for this type of activity, but the Model 1 as a whole is a really venerable option in my opinion. Once again, you're seeing a lot of similarities between the TRM and the ABW. The only difference here is that the ABW does have a thicker stock, but still has a very high grind to it that brings you down to a nice, very acute edge. I think the only thing Thing I would do to really increase its performance is probably take this bevel back not only in degree per side angle but I just find that when you have a little bit more of a bevel so as you guys can see here this is a very narrow bevel as opposed to something like we'll say this TRM um, you can see that this TRM has a little bit wider of a, a bevel and especially on my like TRM neutron here very um, 
prominent bevel, as you guys can see there. So what that means when you have a little bit wider bevel is the bevel is kind of like the actual grind to the blade that does the cutting. And so a lot of people think that, you know, like having a narrow and thin grind down to the bevel is super important. And it is important, but at the same time too, having a nicely ground bevel is going to be one of the easiest ways to enhance your cutting performance without really having to change anything to the blade. So just giving it a few added degrees per side uh, on that angle, or I should say reducing it. So say it's like at 20 degrees and you take it down to 17 degrees, you know, reducing those three degrees per side angle actually can greatly improve your cutting ability and uh, without really sacrificing too much edge durability, especially because this one's in magna cut. So you're really not sacrificing too much. Another one too that I don't think a lot of people would expect, but once again, one that follows suit with a lot of the similarities here is the um, Benchmade 940 Osborne. Now mine's a little bit of a cheater because mine is a little bit more used. So the bevel is pulled up. Once again, this definitely has a very wide bevel to it, as you guys can probably see there. It definitely doesn't look the nicest, but I will say as far as cutting performance goes, this bevel is an absolute rock star and uh, yeah, very slow. So to be expected, it does work pretty well, but I would imagine a stock non, you know, resharpened um, Benchmade 940 would also perform very well as well. So anyways, guys, like I said, this isn't an all inclusive list. Other great options would be the Bun Benchmade bug out, the Hogue Deca. Um, there are a lot of good options out there for slicing, even a lot of the spider codes. I know a lot of people are probably gonna be mad that there's no spider co manix, paramilitary two. Um, those are all excellent choices as well. I'm just trying to show you guys some more out of the box things um, that you know, like a lot of people would expect paramilitary two and the paramilitary two is a venerable option. Like I said, the Manix 2 is a good option. The Para 3 is a good option. The Spidey Chef's a good option. Basically anything that is full flat ground and from Spyderco is going to be a good option. So anyways, guys, I thought these would be a little bit more out of the box. Some of them, like the 940, are a little bit more predictable, but I feel like all of these others are things that you probably wouldn't have initially guessed or thought about. So that's the real reason for you know wanting to include some stuff that's kind of outside of the box. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.